Good morning and happy Saturday, everyone. Taking a live look across Colorado this morning as we are waking up to beautiful views and sunshine and just a few clouds, but just enough to make a day out at the park or on a patio that much more pleasant. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Anusha Roy. The calendar says April, but it feels like summer outside. Corey Reppenhagen's <laughs> out there. And it, Corey, we've just been jealous all morning that you get to have that beautiful view out there uh, with Mount Mitra in the background, is it? On speak? Yeah, exactly, Mark. I mean, the Twin Peaks, Meeker and Long's behind me out here. Beautiful morning out here in Erie. It's go for launch for all those outdoor activities. You can see uh, back here, I think they're setting up for some flag football. We've got tennis already happening here in the park. Baseball games getting ready to get started here. So it's going to be an awesome day for just about everything outdoors here in uh, Colorado today. Take a look at the web camera uh, pointing towards the mountains across the city of Denver right now. You can kind of see those that cloud cover up there. Looks like it's about 50-50 right now. So I think we'll stay that trend all day. You'll see quite a bit of sunshine, warm temperatures. And look at that, the temperature up to 61 degrees at Denver International Airport. So the temperature's already starting to rise. Here's the current temperatures across the rest of the front range. I'm at 47 degrees here in Erie, where I am. Lots of uh, 50s across the front range right now. Here's your Denver forecast going through the rest of the day here. A little bit of cloud cover here and there, but the temperature's up there up into the middle 70s. And here's the rest of the high temperatures for the state of Colorado and the region. Looks like it's going to be an absolutely stunning day across the entire state of Colorado. A stunning day and a stunning weekend here now, which reminds us of last weekend when all that wind came through. Won't be nearly as bad this weekend. We have that to look forward to. But people are still cleaning up and trying to figure everything out after XL's power shutoff. Still top of mind for many people. We also know it's not going to be the last windstorm that we deal with. And XL's preemptive actions to shut off power is now being closely looked at by the state. The governor is frustrated over how long it took to turn the power back on and over the communication as well. Meanwhile, though, other electric providers handled the storm differently. Core Electric Co Cooperative has a fraction of the customers that Excel does. Core did not preemptively shut off power to customers. Their interim chief operating officer explained how they made their reclosers, basically circuit breakers, more sensitive so that power lines were more likely to shut off if they had a problem. The utility company even bragged about it in an email to customers sent Thursday night saying, quote, Core's alternate relay settings do not preemptively turn off any part of our system. They instead make the system more sensitive to potential issues such as a tree on a line which means longer, larger outages than we would like, but it, it saves that fire and, and other danger. XL, on the other hand, took the extreme measure to purposefully shut off power for 55,000 people last weekend. XL also has reclosers, but said even a tree branch into a power line could start a fire before the recloser stops electricity from flowing. New overnight, Aurora police officers are investigating a shooting involving two cars that were filled with minors and young adults. Happened near East 35th Place, about a block away from I-70. Police say the shooting happened just after midnight. Officers believe after people in, char in the cars exchanged words a teenager was shot. He is expected to be okay. Officers, uh, officers have not released any suspect information yet. We're still working to learn more information about what led up to this shooting as well. This morning, we now know how long a former school bus aide will be spending behind bars. A judge sentenced Tyler Zanella to 12 and a half years for abusing 11 special needs children in Fort Collins. Police arrested him nearly a year ago after security camera footage showed him assaulting the kids. The judge's sentence came after more than two hours of emotional testimony. The paraprofessional abused Sabrina Herrick's daughter repeatedly. The school invited her to watch the tapes and then Herrick opened up about what she saw. What I saw instead was, in fact, my worst nightmare. My daughter being assaulted over and over and over while she bawled her eyes out. A nine-year-old little girl, autistic, barely verbal on a good day. Body blocked into a corner and assaulted by a man easily three times her size who'd been hired to protect her from the dangers of the world. The sentence includes two years in the county jail and ten and a half years in prison. With good behavior, Zanella could be out in about seven years. The judge also ordered him to not have any contact with kids under the age of 18. That includes his own children. His attorney is planning to appeal that.
The state and the city of North Glen have come to a compromise over a proposed state mental health facility. The city says the development will go forward, but on their own terms. The state plans to transform two former senior living community buildings into transitional living for patients who have been discharged from higher level mental health hospitals. But residents and city council there in North Glen said they were concerned about the facility's proximity to a school. State rules would allow a small number of patients with prior sex offenses to be admitted to those facilities. The mayor of Northland says people who live nearby don't want that now or ever really. And it's in between a significant apartment complex and a neighborhood school. And another school is nearby. So the proximity to children was very concerning, which is why we needed to notify our residents and start the conversation with the state. The new agreement says the facility will never house sex offenders, will keep a 1,000 foot distance from schools, and build higher fencing around the facility. In news from the state capitol, Democrats' most sweeping gun control measure at the capitol this year is now advancing, but with significant changes. The bill would ban the manufacture, purchase, sale, or transfer of so-called assault weapons. It defines that term to include 50 caliber rifles or a semi-automatic firearm with a detachable magazine and a modification like a pistol grip or a muzzle brake. Originally, a violation was punishable by a quarter million dollar fine. Then it was made a petty criminal offense. Now it's being changed back to a fine, but a far smaller one at $750. The bill does still have to pass a final vote in the House, then faces a pretty tough road from there. Democrats have a smaller majority in the Senate, and Democratic Governor Jared Polis is openly skeptical of that state ban, saying that this is a federal issue. Also at the state capitol, a new bill could force hospitals to file lawsuits under their own names if they want to sue patients. A Nine News investigation found that UC Health is suing hundreds of patients each year under the name of its debt collector. As it's written right now, the bill would force hospitals and other owners of debt to sue under two names, both the name of their debt collector as well as their own name. The legislation passed the House Judiciary Committee this week could be introduced before the full House in about a week or so. And then another bill to improve safety and traffic flow on Colorado's mountain highways is moving through the state legislature. The bill just passed out of committee. Under current law, CDOT can issue closures or require commercial vehicles to use chains on I-70 from September 1st through May 31st each year. This is between Dotsero, just west of Gypsum, and Morrison. The new bill would change the locations where that's required to include mountain corridors on the western slope, including Glenwood Canyon. The bill also focuses on cracking down on speeding and ticketing commercial vehicle drivers for sitting in the far left lane. This is also a reminder that drivers can expect delays on westbound I-70 in Glenwood Canyon starting on Monday. Crews will be reconstructing rockfall protection work around Blue Gulch east of Glenwood Springs that is near the Hanging Lake exit. That work is expected to last through Friday, April 26th. New overnight police in Sydney, Australia say at least five people are dead after a stabbing attack at a shopping mall. It happened at the Westfield Bondi Junction Shopping Center in Sydney. Emergency services confirmed to CNN that eight people, including a child, were taken to the hospital. Right now, there's no word on their conditions. At a news conference, police said one of their officers shot and killed the attacker. Right now, investigators say they're not ruling anything out when it comes to a possible motive. This morning, the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem is issuing a travel warning for U.S. government employees and their family members. The warning restricts travel outside areas like Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. This is in reaction to a threat from Iran vowing to get revenge for the April 1st airstrike on its embassy compound in Damascus. President Biden said that he is expecting Iran to strike Israel sooner rather than later. April is Oral Cancer Awareness Month, and today there's a local business that's taking the edge off of getting a cancer screening. Denver Beer Company will be hosting free screenings at three different locations, one in Littleton from noon to 1.30, Platt Street from 2.15 to 3.45, and then Lowry from 4.30 to 6. Longtime Denver craft beer promoter and oral cancer survivor Marty Jones says detecting the disease early is so important. Well, a few months into the pandemic, I began losing weight for no apparent reason mm. and scheduled an appointment to get in to see Dr. Griffith. And then looking me over to try to find what might be causing that, he found a small almond-sized lump in the side of my neck mm -hmm. and said, I want you to get that biopsy. And it came back as a cancerous lymph node. And that led to the discovery of a tumor at the base of my tongue. And, wow. Um, so that was about a little over three years ago. And yeah. so since then, I've decided to put in some time to alert others to the importance of early detection of oral cancer because it's key.
So today you can grab a beer and then in less than five minutes, get a quick visual inspection in your mouth. The doctor will also take a look at your neck and shoulders for any abnormalities. Also a portion of all Yum Yum series pints will be donated back to the Oral Cancer Awareness Foundation.